Good afternoon, EDH enthusiasts. I'm the Planeswalker Project, and welcome to Commander Deck Tech. From the Fallout set, we got a ton of new commanders, but the one I was most excited to brew around is the Wise Mothman, a benevolent and intelligent cryptid that lives in Appalachia. This one, specifically, with its purple eyes, all glowy and such, is revered by the Cult of the Enlightened. But in Magic, we have a very new tangible threat at commander tables. The Wise Mothman is a 3-3 insect mutant for one, a black, a green, and a blue, which with flying. Whenever the Wise Mothman enters or attacks, each player gets a radiation counter. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, you put a plus one plus one counter onto each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. Radiation counters, or rad counters, are a rad new mechanic first introduced in the Fallout set, and are similar to poison and experience counters in that they go onto the player themselves rather than on their creatures. Rad counters have an ability that triggers during the pre con combat main phase, and they mill the player with them equal to the number of rad counters on them. For each non-land card milled during that process, that player loses one life and then loses one rad counter. This creates a bit of a mill cycle that comes and goes as players gain and lose rad counters. The Wise Mothman's enter and attack ability ensures that players will have a healthy number of radiation counters on them. The second ability lets us put a plus one plus one counter onto creatures whenever non-land cards are milled by any means, though it will only give a single plus one plus one counter onto those X creatures. The wording is a bit confusing, but you can slowly build up your creatures into dangerous threats with each instance of mill. Yes, today our deck is a mill deck. <laughs> Yes, we are monsters for building the strategy in the fun and exciting world of Commander Land, but after total atomic annihilation, not everything needs to be sunshine and rainbows, and I'm all here to bring the doom and gloom. But first, if you're looking for a deck box that will survive a nuclear winter, I highly recommend Arcane Fortress deck boxes. They are affordable, they are sturdy, and with their stained glass artwork, visually stunning. I've begun housing all of my Forever decks in them. Their radiant stained glass collection of deck boxes can hold over 100 sleeved cards and has a removable tray that can hold dice and counters. All of these are held in place by very powerful magnets that won't pop loose. If you use my affiliate link in the description box below, you'll get a sweet discount on your first purchase. Now, back to the Bothman. This deck will focus on giving out those tasty, tasty rad counters and ensuring that our opponents will be milling their decks constantly. At the same time, we have a few kindred strategies utilizing some of the mutant and zombie creatures that will benefit us from that mill. Finally, we have a very small but effective reanimator package that will be our fallback should we need to pivot to a shorter clock. Starting off, let's discuss those rad counters. Bloatfly Swarm is an excellent card to drop as early as you can manage, as it runs the potential to give plenty of rad counters as it's dealt damage. This is also a great target for our Wise Mothman's ability, as we can put plus one plus one counters onto the Bloatfly to replace the ones that we've removed and continue to give out a healthy dose of radiation. Pharaoh Ghoul and the Glowing One have among the highest rate of rad counter distribution. The Pharaoh Ghoul will give out rad counters to each opponent based on its power as it dies. This is an excellent creature to pump up and then let it die to get that death trigger. Glowing One has two unique and relevant abilities. When it connects to a player, that player gets four rad counters. Then, whenever a player mills a non-land card, you gain one life. This is a tremendously valuable ability, as it not only neutralizes the radiation counters pinging you for each non-land card, but you then gain life off of your opponents losing their radiation counters. Infesting Radroach is another great option, as it has the totally balanced and reasonable text of giving out an equal amount of rad counters to the combat damage that it deals to a player. That's never proven itself to be an overpowered in Commander, has it? Lastly, the Radroach has a very easily triggered recursion ability, returning it from your graveyard to your hand whenever an opponent mills a non-land card. Mirelurk Queen is a 4-4 for 5 with Vigilance, which is a pretty decent stat line. When it enters, target player gets 2 rad counters. Finally, whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, you draw a card and then put a plus one plus one counter onto the Mirelurk Queen. This ability only triggers once each turn. Uh, that last part is all fine and dandy, except for the part where each opponent's turn runs the possibility of drawing us a card and bulking up our queen. Nightkin Ambusher is another 4-4 for 4 mana with Ward 2. <laughs> Whenever it enters, target player gets 4 rad counters. Lastly, the Nightkin Ambusher can't be blocked as long as the defending player has a rad counter. This is another bulk rad counter source, and because of its inherent protection, the potential to be unblockable, I highly contemplated adding in some infect to this deck. 
But then I realized I do want to play more than one game with this deck before someone shoves a nuke cola bottle down my throat, so we'll go with the milk toast option and say not. Screeching Scorch Beast is a 5 5 flyer for 6 mana that also has menace. Whenever the Scorch Beast attacks, each player gets 2 rad counters. Whenever one or more non land cards are milled, you may create that many 2 2 black zombie mutant creature tokens. Do this only once per turn. There it is again, that super balanced and not actually stupidly powerful clause of creating that many of something. Yes, this only triggers once per turn, but each opponent does have a once turn, and if you're irradiating them, they're going to be milling cards. If they mill 5 cards and 4 of them are non-lands, you get 4 tutu zombie mutants. If, at the start of your turn, you run the likelihood of untapping with a bunch of zombies ready for action. Strong, the British Cespian, is a 7-7 for 6 mana with War 2. It also has Enrage. Whenever Strong is dealt damage, you get 3 radiation counters and put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto Strong. You also gain life rather than lose life from radiation. This is so <laughs> strong. Is that joke doing anything for anyone? This is another neutralizing ability for the radiation poisoning, and then on top of that, Strong will get bigger and give you more radiation whenever he's dealt damage. Also, Ward. Tato Farmer gives us two rad counters upon a landfall trigger, and you can tap him to put a target land in a graveyard that was milled there this turn onto the battlefield under your control tapped. This card is bonkers. If your opponent has milled a fetch land or a very powerful utility land, you can tap the Tato Farmer to return that card to your battlefield tapped, and then you get two radiation counters. It does have the requirement of being milled that turn, but it's still a very strong ability. Vexing Radgull is a 1-2 for 2 with flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two rad counters if they don't already have rad counters. Otherwise, you proliferate. This is a great proliferate trigger, and it's a great way to ensure players have at least two rad counters on them, whenever they get them from the combat damage or from the proliferate. Nuclear Fallout is a very flavorful board wipe, where you pay X and two black to give each creature twice minus X minus X until the end of turn, and then each player gets X rad counters. The double minus X minus X makes this very efficient at clearing the board. And whether you want to dump more mana into X to clear off the bigger threats or to give out more rad counters, it doesn't take much to make this thing deadly. Nuka Nuke Launcher is an equipment that gives plus 3 plus 0 and intimidate. Whenever the equipped creature attacks, until the defending player's next turn, they get two rad counters whenever they cast a spell. This is a very dangerous card and can force the defending player to play very conservatively lest they rack up some nasty rad counters. This also does not require the creature to even connect with the opponent to get the triggered ability. It needs only to attack. Struggle for Project Purity is an enchantment that has two modes that you choose as it enters. You can choose Brotherhood, which lets each opponent draw a card at the beginning of your upkeep, and then you draw a card for each card drawn this way. Or you can pick Enclave, which triggers upon you being attacked, giving the player attacking you a number of rad counters equal to twice the number of creatures attacking you. This is a great include because you can pick the mode that is best suited for your current context, and both are super strong. Lastly, Vault 12, the Necropolis, is a 3 chapter saga. When it enters, each player gets 3 rad counters. Upon Chapter 2 resolving, you create X-2-2 Black Zombie Mutant Creature Tokens, where X is the total number of rad counters among the players. Finally, Chapter 3 resolves and puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters onto each creature you control that's either a zombie or a mutant. I love how high the ceiling is on this card, and it gets better as the more radiation lingers on the battlefield. We do have plenty of plus 1 plus 1 counter synergy in this deck, and though it isn't a tremendous aspect, it does result in some very bulky creatures, especially those zombies and mutants, which comprise, I think, most of our deck. Let's move on now to the second part of our strategy, our zombies and our mutants. A lot of the cards we've actually discussed thus far are either a zombie, a mutant, or both. And so to help support those creature types, we've included some potent cards to make and break our hordes. Cleaver Scab is a 2-4 for 4 and has one ability. For 3 mana, you can sack another zombie and tap the scab to create two tokens that are each copies of the sacrificed creature. This gives us double the value on some of our more dangerous zombies. 
Feral Ghoul is my personal preference for the sacrifice option, as we not only get to dish out some rad counters, but we then get two more Feral Ghouls, some of which we can sacrifice on the following turn for an additional two more tokens. Crypt Breaker is a mainstay in zombie decks. Being a one drop with plenty of upside in its two abilities, it's a great early game drop. You pay two, tap the Crypt Breaker, and discard a card to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. You can also tap three untapped zombies you control to draw a card and lose one life. Considering this deck has plenty of ways to getting zombies into play, we should have plenty of card draw fodder. Grave Titan is a classic zombie engine, creating two 2-2 two, two black zombies whenever it enters or attacks. Grave Spawn Sovereign lets us tap five untapped zombies we control to reanimate any creature. This includes our opponents, and so as we mill them of their precious cards, we can just yoink the ones that are best for our own personal use. Hancock Ghoulish Mayor gives plus X plus X to each of our zombies and mutants, where X is the number of counters on Hancock. He also has Undying, so if he dies and doesn't have a plus one plus one counter on him, he can return to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on him. This is also another great target to dump counters onto, as he'll give the entire board a static buff. Haven Ghoul Runebinder does a sort of similar thing, letting us use creatures in our graveyards to generate 2-2 zombies, and then we put a plus one plus one counter onto each zombie we control. Jason Bright is a potent card draw engine, letting us draw a card whenever a zombie or mutant we control dies, as long as its power was different from its base power. All of the buffs that this deck can do will cause us to draw more cards, and then we can pay two and sacrifice a creature with the Come Fly With Me ability to put a plus one plus one counter onto a target creature we control, and it then gains flying until the end of turn. Literally, the bulk of this deck is either zombies or mutants, and so we can draw off of nearly anything in our deck. Lord of the Accursed is our classic zombie lord, giving a plus one plus one anthem effect, and we can pay two, tap him, to give all of our zombies menace until the end of turn. This can make us win through combat damage, should we need to press the game quicker. Undead Alchemist has a very unique role in this deck. While he's in play, any combat damage that our zombies would deal to a player are instead replaced by a mill effect. They don't take the combat damage, but instead they'll mill the amount of damage that they would have taken. Also, whenever a creature gets sent from an opponent's library to their graveyard, i.e. through mill, we exile that card and then we create a 2-2 zombie. This synergizes so nicely with our deck, as now our zombies are going to mill opponents and then when they hit creatures we get more zombies. Dreadhorde Invasion is a very important card for our zombie type as well. At the beginning of our upkeep, we lose one life and amass one, which either gives us a 0-0 zombie army creature token if we don't control one, and then puts a plus one plus one counter onto it, or we put a plus one plus one counter onto an army we control. The important part of this card's text is giving all zombie tokens with power six or greater lifelink until the end of turn. Now this doesn't specify that that lifelink is just the zombie army, and so if our other generic zombies have grown to power six or greater, they all gain lifelink. Graph Harvest is another route to the menace ability, which can once again come in handy once we begin getting enough zombies in play. We also have a nice zombie generation ability for the price of four mana and exiling a card from our graveyard. For the sake of our reanimator pivot, we are heavily inclined to send cards to the graveyard through our mill effects, but should we absolutely need to, Rise of the Dark Realms reanimates everything in all graveyards and has them all enter under our control. This can be back-breaking levels of power. Should we've made our opponents mill all their best cards, they're going to serve us. A few mill cards that you can include can be cards like Altar of Dementia, which lets us sacrifice a creature to mill a player equal to that creature's power. Altar of the Brood, which mills one card from each opponent whenever another permanent enters under our control. Mesmeric Orb, which mills a player a card whenever they untap a permanent. This will mill us, but it's going to mill everyone else as well. Mind Crank mills opponents whenever they lose life. This can compound very nicely when they have to mill off of their radiation as that one additional point of damage they take will make them lose a rad counter and translate to more milling. Blood Sheaf Ascension combos very nicely with this, and once we get it to at least three quest counters, whenever an opponent has a card enter their graveyard from anywhere, like when they mill, they lose two life and then we gain two life. This, combined with Minecrank, is an infinite combo and will kill a player. Now, I am a fan of alternate win conditions, and so because we have a number of plus one plus one counters given out in this deck, I figured Simic Ascendancy would be a shoo-in. 20 plus one plus one counters should be very easy to get out in this deck. 
and so this can be easily achieved as a quick win condition. The main strategy of this deck is to put mill effects into place quickly, either through cards that can consistently give out rag counters, or just generic mill effects. We want to start putting pressure on opponents early, so they hopefully will lose their better targets. The deck folds to a reanimator strategy as those decks also thrive on their graveyards being full, and so we're unfortunately helping their deck out. But to play against them, you have to utilize our grave hate cards to snatch up their best cards before they find a way to get them back. Our deck handles mill a bit more aggressively than traditional mill decks in that we can actually defend ourselves with creatures. We have creatures that have bulk enough that can be thrown in the way of threats that come to take us out of the game. We are resilient, like the Rad Roaches, and can take anything that our opponents can throw at us. I think that was the most disgusting analogy I've ever read out loud. My gods. But for now, that will wrap up our look at the Wise Mothman Commander deck. What sort of cards are you currently building around? Let's talk about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're brewing with from the Fallout set. If you enjoyed this video, likes and shares are the best way to help us grow as a channel. If you're new here, subscribe to never miss a beat. I appreciate you all hanging out with me today. Remember to take your rad X and I'll see you all in the next video.